Hello, welcome to lecture 4 of this course. This is the first lecture of module 2. In this lecture, I am going to give you a brief technical introduction to quantum entanglement. Also, some necessary mathematical tools also I am going to discuss. So, let us begin. So, what's an entangled state? To put very simply, a quantum system is said to be entangled if its quantum state cannot be factored as a product state of its local constituents. In other words, they are not individual system or particles but are an inseparable whole. One constituent cannot be fully described without considering the other. To understand it, let us consider two qubits. Let us consider two qubits, a composite system. A and B. Okay, and the basic states we take to describe this uh, qubit system, this two composite system is K0 and K1. Alright, uh, where K0 may refer to a spin up and K1 may refer to spin down state of the qubit system if uh, it's a two electron composite system. Now consider the situation uh, where either qubit A is in K0 and qubit B is in K1 or qubit A is in uh, K1 and qubit B is in the state 0. If a measurement is made, uh, you get either of these two results only. Then the state of the composite system can be represented mathematically as follows so say when you make a measurement either you you will get the system a to be in k0 and system b to be in k1 or you may get the system a to be in k1 and system b to be in system a to be in k1 and system b to be in k0 right so these are the two situation and it basically you have a probability to get either this situation or that situation so i can represent the state of this uh, whole thing this particular state would be represented by a state like this now the question is uh, suppose uh, individually the system a is described by a state say k psi a and system B is represented by say, uh, say phi B. Okay, whether uh, I, can, I can express this particular state, let me say this is state, this is state one, uh, say this is equation one, describe this, uh, this composite system. Uh, that means either system A is in K0, system B is in K1, or system if system b is in k0 system a is found to be in k1 okay the question is whether i can express equation number one as a product state of psi a and psi b all right so what i mean by this is that whether i can write say alpha k0 a plus uh, not plus it's a two composite system k0 a k1 b plus beta k0 b k1 a whether i can write it as a product state like this or psi a psi b so whether i can do that let me say this is my equation number two okay let us see that whether we can do that or not suppose we assume that yes we can do that and then what is going to happen we have to analyze it let us analyze it now because both this uh, psi a k psi a and k uh, phi b uh, can be expressed in terms of the basis states k0 and k1 so psi a i can express as a superposition of k0 and k1 so let us say the superposition state is p 0 a plus q 1 a superposition states p and q are complex numbers and uh, so system b for system b i can write r say 0 b plus 
S one B, right? Where P, Q, R, and S are uh, complex numbers. Now, if I put this expressions in my equation two and expand it, so what I will get? So let me write uh, equation two once again. Alpha zero a one b plus beta zero b one a. So then the right hand side, if I expand, so I will get as okay. Let me first write the whole thing. P zero a plus q one a. This is psi a and for the other one i have r 0 b plus s 1 b okay if i expand it if i then the right hand side i will get uh, terms like this say pr 0 a 0 b ps 0 a 1 b Q R one A zero B and Q S one A one B. Simple, right? Now, if we if we compare both sides, compare both left hand side, left hand side and right hand side of this equation, right hand side, you can immediately see that I will get. Uh, alpha is equal to ps beta is equal to qr and you you'll have pr is equal to 0 and ps qs qs would be equal to 0 right so say this is equation 1 2 3 and four now you see we cannot have alpha to be equal to zero in fact beta can also be equal to zero so first uh, take this case say alpha is not equal to zero if this is to be true and if all these equations has to be satisfied then we must have this implies that p cannot be equal to zero uh, just look at this uh, equation uh, just look at the if this to be satisfied p into r so r has to be equal to zero right this if equation three has to be satisfied r has to be equal to zero and also you see s cannot be equal to zero this s cannot be equal to zero so for equation four to be satisfied we must have s is equal to uh, q is equal to zero right we must have to have q equal to zero but if that is so this automatically implies that i must have beta is equal to zero so this is not possible because my assumption is that alpha and beta both are uh, non-zero so this is not possible similarly you can uh, take the other case uh, where if you impose this condition that beta cannot be equal to zero it eventually lead you to the fact that alpha is equal to zero again this is also not possible therefore we can conclude that we cannot uh, express this state alpha 0 a 1 b plus beta 0 b this particular quantum state we cannot write it as a product state of the individual system psi a psi b we cannot do that and therefore this particular state that we are considering here this is a entangled state purely because of the fact that we cannot uh, you know represent it as per the definition we uh, we cannot write it as a product state of the individual constituents or subsystems so this is an entangled state now let us consider this problem using the so-called density matrix formalism let me write the entangled state in this particular form so k psi is equal to alpha 0 a 
वन बी प्लस बीटा जिरो बी वन ए ओके द करेसपिंग डेन्सिटी अपारेटर उड वि रो उड वि इक्वेल टू केट साल ब्रा साल इफ उइ वन टू स्टाडी सिस्टेम ए स्पेसिफिकली उ नीड टू नो द रिड्यूस डेन्सिटी अपारेटर अफ ए एंड डेट उ कैन फाइंड आउट बै ट्रेसिंग आउट बी फ्रम द डेन्सिटी अपारेटर रो सो उ हेव टू डू द ट्रेस अपारेशन ओभार द डेन्सिटी अपारेटर सो दिस इज अपारेटर सो लेट मी पुट द अपारेटर सैन हियर सो बिकज द बेसिक स्टेट्स आर केट जिरो एंड केट वि केट वन बट उ हेव टू वेन उल टेक द ट्रेस उ हेव टू टेक द बेसिक स्टेट इन द सिस्टेम बी उइ आर नाउ ट्रेसिंग आउट बी सो दे आर फोर आई हेव टू डू द अपारेशन दिस वे सो आई उल टेक द ट्रेस फर्स्ट ओभार जिरो केट जिरो एंड देन यूजिंग दि आदार आदार बेसिक स्टेट सो दिस इज वाट आई उल हेव and in fact if you do it in we have actually done this kind of problem in lecture 3 and in the first problem solving session so i encourage you to work it out if you do it then this is what you should obtain you will get mod alpha square 0 a 0 a plus mod beta square uh, 1 a 1 a in this form and as you can see this is the form of a mixed state for system a it's a mixed state for system a as long as both alpha and beta are non zero okay similarly for the system b we can write row b we have to then trace out a if you trace out a then you can show that you are going to get mod alpha square 0 b 0 b plus mod beta square 1 b 1 b okay clearly when one of the system is considered uh, with reg with regard to the other actually without regard to the other it is generally a mixed state and what does it mean it it means that you don't have the full information about the system in fact this gives us a hint about how to characterize entanglement according to the degree of purity of either of the such systems so for example if say trace of rho b square is equal to 1 then the state ket sai is not an entangled state is not an entangled state because it is going to be a completely pure state right the system b would be pure state that means you have the complete information about the system b and you need not have any information need not have to know any information about system b system being in the Uh, state a uh, mixed state this is you see the system b is in mixed state that means again i'm reiterating that you don't have the complete information of the system b so overall you have information about system a plus b only but individual information is not there now if trace rho b square is equal to 1 that means you have complete information about the system b that means it is in a pure state so if you find if you find that means but if trace rho b square is less than 1 it may say uh, it implies that we may conclude we may conclude that the state psi describes an entanglement entanglement between a and b between a and b so you can either find out trace 
of uh, rho b square or trace of rho a square if you find that it is less than one in both cases then we can we can say that uh, this state psi represents an entanglement between the system a and b when we talk about quantum entanglement we deal with composite systems a composite system is a system which contains two or more parts in it in this course mostly we are going to talk about composite system which contains two parts in it and such systems are called bipartite system the example just i have considered is an example of quantum entanglement in pure states later on i am going to talk about entanglement of mixed state as well but for now let us discuss quantum entanglement of pure state a little bit more technically say h a and h p are hilbert spaces b hilbert spaces and let us say there is a state phi which belongs to these two hilbert spaces that it belongs to the direct product of these two hilbert spaces of system a and b and it is a pure state let phi be a pure state now this state phi a this state phi is a product state is a product state in the hilbert space h is equal to which is the direct product or, or the tensor product of the hilbert spaces h a and h b if basically i am giving you the definition of product state okay so the state phi is a product state in the hilbert space h which is equal to the direct product of hilbert space of a and hilbert space of b if there are there are pure states say phi a belonging to the hilbert space a and another state say phi b belonging to the hilbert space b this is basically a technical definition uh, it is such that this phi i can write is a tensor product of these two pure states phi a and phi b okay you can consider it as i said as a definition of product state a pure state phi is uh, separable if it is a product state in hilbert space h otherwise uh, the state phi is entanglement if phi cannot be cannot be expressed as product state that means we already know if this is not equal to the tensor product of these two states then phi is an entangled state so this you can consider this as definition however the fact that the pure states fulfilling the condition of entanglement is not immediately obvious so let us say to understand it further so let i have ai be the basis be the basis for hilbert space h a and b i corresponds to the hill basis be the basis for hilbert space corresponding to system b the set of basis this set 
AI BI, this is basically the direct product of these two bases AI and BI, is a basis of the Hilbert space H and every pure state every pure state phi in the Hilbert space S can be expressed as we are now discussing technical things so therefore you have to listen carefully so I can express this pure state phi as summation over the basis I goes from uh, say da da refers to the dimension of the hilbert space a and j goes from to db that's the dimension of the hilbert space b and i have this complex coefficient alpha ij a i b j okay uh, and also obviously the condition this complex coefficient alpha ij has to satisfy is alpha i j mod square is equal to one i think similar stuff we have discussed uh, when i first mentioned about bipartite system in an earlier class so here i'm giving a general definition uh, therefore it is necessary to find a state such that it can be written as a linear combination so if you have a pure state like this it is necessary to uh, find a state such that it can be written as a linear combination of tensor product this is tensor product this is the shorthand notation for the tensor product ai cross bj uh, of the basis states of the parts but cannot be written as a tensor product of two states from the respective parts directly but to illustrate it let me give you an example let us consider uh, these two states consider two arbitrary states two arbitrary states let us say i have a state say k psi 1 in the basis state 0 k 0 and k 1 so alpha 0 plus beta 1 and another state I have is a psi 2 that is a gamma 0 plus delta 1. Alright. Now an arbitrary product state psi, k psi can be written as the tensor product of psi 1 and psi 2. Okay. And if I open it up, then what I am going to get? I will get alpha gamma 0 0 plus alpha delta 0 1 plus beta gamma 1 0 plus beta delta 1 1 let's check carefully this is what you should get now say now say if we have this state now if the state phi plus is equal to 1 by root 2 0 0 plus 1 1 where to be a product state suppose i have this state and i have to write it as a product state then i think we have done a similar type of example at the beginning of this lecture so if you look at it if i have to write this as a product state phi uh, has to be expressed expressed as a product state as a product state what i should have if you look at this expression here from here you see i'm that means product state of this type so if this is to be written as a product state this phi plus has to be written as a product state if you analyze it you will find that you should have alpha delta is equal to zero right and this implies uh, this is going to imply that either 
alpha is equal to 0 or delta is equal to 0. But this means again, this in turn is going to imply that uh, alpha, gamma and or alpha, gamma or beta, delta will vanish. Okay. This alpha, gamma or beta, delta is going to vanish and therefore this going to lead us to a contradiction with the assumption that this guy is a product state. So clearly this is not a product state. That is what it means. What it is then as per the definition, phi plus is an entangled state. Is an entangled state. I hope you are getting it. Uh, in fact, phi plus is one of the bell state is a is a bell state we are going to discuss bells inequality and so on in the next lecture and uh, this kind of state does exist experiment shows that such kind of states uh, does exist and there are four bell states and all of them serve as an example of entangled state these four bell states are so let me write down all the bell states here you can remember them so these bell states are all of them are entangled states phi plus already we know it is 1 by root 2 0 0 plus 1 1 phi minus is 1 by root 2 0 0 minus 1 1 Okay, you see the difference in the sign here. And then we have state psi plus 1 by root 2, 0, 1 plus 1, 0. And we have psi minus is equal to 1 by root 2, 0, 1 minus 1, 0. All right. So it is interesting to note that these four bell states are mutually orthogonal to each other. These four bell states are mutually orthogonal to each other. And because of them, they form an orthonormal basis. They form an orthonormal basis. Orthonormal basis in the four-dimensional complex Hilbert space four dimensional which is in short notation I can write C4 Hilbert space this is important it is used in quantum information and quantum computation a lot we'll now discuss a very convenient method to characterize quantum entanglement this method is particularly useful for bipartite system in the context of bipartite quantum entanglement. This method is called Smith decomposition method. I am going to discuss it but before that I have to remind you about some other decomposition method from linear algebra so that you can understand this method quickly. Say A is a linear operator in the Hilbert space and it satisfies the eigenvalue equation a k psi is equal to lambda k psi where lambda is the eigenvalue and k psi is the eigenkit and A is an eigen operator. You know that the operator A can be represented by a matrix and all of you also know that how to find eigenvalues and eigenvectors of a matrix, right? Now let me invoke a result from linear algebra which you may have seen uh, that relation which goes like this A V where uh, V is a matrix and A V is equal to V capital lambda. I am going to explain what are these. So this is the relation where V is a 
matrix formed by the eigenvectors of matrix A formed by eigenvectors V1, V2 and so on of the matrix A and this capital lambda it is a diagonal matrix formed by the eigenvalues of the matrix A and it eigenvalues are say lambda 1, lambda 2 and so on uh, which are uh, its diagonal elements. The convention is uh, that that you arrange the this capital lambda matrix in such a way that the eigenvalue lambda 1 is the one which has the highest value and lambda 2 is less than lambda 1, lambda 3 is less than lambda 2 and so on and the vector V or which is the matrix V is formed in such a way that V1 is the eigenvector corresponding to the eigenvalue lambda 1 V2 is the eigenvector corresponding to the eigenvalue lambda 2 and so on. Uh, those of you uh, who have seen this particular relation for the first time, I can illustrate it uh, by an example. Let us consider a 2 by 2 matrix for illustration purpose. Say consider a matrix A, a 2 by 2 matrix. Let us say it is half 1, 1, 1, 1. And you can easily find out the eigenvalues of these uh, matrix. You just have to uh, set up the characteristic equation and solve it. And if you do that, you will get the eigenvalues as lambda 1 is equal to 1. And the other eigenvalue would be lambda 2 is equal to 0. You can find the eigenvector corresponding to lambda 1. And you can show that it would be 1 by root 2. 1 1 that's the eigenvector corresponding to lambda 1 and v2 which is the eigenvector corresponding to lambda 2 is equal to 0 that would be 1 by root 2 1 minus 1 now using this v1 and v2 eigenvectors you can now write down the matrix uh, v and that would be uh, constituted by v1 v2 explicitly speaking uh, writing you can write it as 1 by root 2 1 1 1 minus 1 okay and this capital lambda that's the diagonal matrix would be 1 0 0 0 now let me quickly verify whether the relation that i have written here is obeyed by the matrix a uh, or not to do that let me first multiply a and v and a matrix is half 1 1 1 1 and v matrix is 1 by root 2 uh, it is 1 1 1 minus 1 if you do the multiplication you will get 1 by root 2 1 0 1 0 let us say this is my equation number 1 and now if i multiply uh, v and capital lambda then i will get v is equal to 1 by root 2 1 1 1 minus 1 and capital lambda is 1 0 0 0 and you will get as a result of the matrix multiplication you will get 1 by root 2 1 0 1 0 and as you let me say this is equation number 2 as you can see equation 1 and 2 matches so they are equal so this implies with this example i have just proved that a v is equal to v capital lambda this is a very important relation and very useful let us now separate this matrix A from this relation. To do that, let me multiply both sides of this equation. Say this is equation number 1. Multiply, multiply both sides of equation 1 by V dagger, which is the Hermitian conjugate of the matrix V on right. Okay. So that means what I'm doing is a v 
V dagger is equal to V capital lambda V dagger. Now you see V V dagger is an identity matrix. So I will get on the left hand side A is equal to V capital lambda V dagger. This way I am able to uh, decompose the matrix into three parts and this method is called eigen decomposition method this method is called eigen decomposition method why eigen decomposition because a is a eigen matrix so effectively we have decomposed a square matrix into another three square matrix here a is a square matrix of dimension say n by n that means n rows n columns v is also a square matrix of dimension n by n capital lambda which is a diagonal matrix it has also the dimension of n by n and v dagger which is the hermitian conjugate of the matrix v it also has the dimension n by n many a times the eigen matrix given to us may not be a square matrix it may be a non-square matrix that means it may have say m number of rows and n number of columns in that case is it possible to decompose that matrix into three parts the way we have done it for the eigen decomposition method yes it is possible provided the three parts obey certain peculiar kind of forms and this method is known as the singular value decomposition method where one of the parts is going to be a diagonal matrix and diagonal matrix we are always interested because it has uh, it is easy to handle and it contains lot of important information so our goal is to decompose the matrix a as follows a would be equal to capital u capital sigma and capital V dagger I'm going to explain all these uh, components one by one A is a non-square matrix that means it has say M rows and N columns where M is not equal to N and also I'm going to assume that M is greater than N that means the number of rows is get, uh, more than the number of, number of columns capital U is a square matrix having the dimension of M by M that means M rows M columns and V dagger which is the Hermitian uh, matrix of uh, corresponding to the matrix V it, it is a square matrix having the dimension of N by N and this capital Sigma is a uh, diagonal matrix having the dimension of M by N M rows N columns okay now this matrices uh, has to be of a particular type uh, for example let me talk about all the components one by one now say this capital u matrix this is a square matrix and it has to have this form where its components are say u1 u2 its elements are u1 u2 up to um where u1 u2 um these are orthonormal vectors these are orthonormal vectors and i'm going to discuss uh, shortly how these uh, uh, orthonormal vectors can be obtained from the matrix a and uh, these uh, these are called uh, left singular vectors left singular vectors because of the fact that they this capital u matrix you see this is uh, situating at the left uh, left side of the whole expression here right it is situated at the left and this capital v also of the similar type it is uh, it's a square matrix with orthonormal vectors v1 v2 up to vn and these are called right, right singular vectors for the same reason because they are situated at the right of this expression here as you can see now what about this matrix in the middle that is capital sigma capital sigma is a diagonal matrix and it it is a 
m by n matrix is a non square matrix and its elements diagonal elements are arranged uh, this way say its diagonal elements are lambda 1 lambda 2 all of them are arranged in the main diagonal up to say lambda n and rest of the elements are zero so all the other elements are zero like this okay also it has this property that uh, it's a positive matrix so lambda 1 lambda 2 lambda n are positive numbers and lambdas are arranged in such a way that lambda 1 has the highest value and lambda n has the lowest value uh, this matrix capital sigma is called singular value matrix it is called singular value matrix and this decomposition if we can write a as capital u capital sigma v dagger with all the vector all the matrices having the form that i have just discussed is called singular value decomposition method or in short it is called svd now let us see how we can obtain these various components first let me discuss how we can obtain this matrix capital v and this matrix capital sigma given a non-square matrix a to do that let me multiply this expression so let me write it separately here so let me write once again our svd a is equal to capital u from SBD method say we can write a is equal to like this if I multiply both sides of this equation by a dagger Hermitian conjugate of the matrix a I have here a dagger capital U Sigma V dagger now let me put a again here in this expression a is equal to capital U Sigma v dagger and then here i have this dagger here u capital sigma v dagger let me now exploit this particular property from linear algebra you may know that a the product of two matrices a and b and if i take the uh, hermitian conjugate then i am going to get b dagger a dagger so exploiting this the first term here this term i can write as v sigma dagger u dagger and this expression let me write as it is capital u capital sigma v dagger now u dagger u is a identity matrix and capital sigma is simply uh, sigma dagger is simply uh, sigma because sigma dagger is a uh, sigma is a diagonal matrix so sigma dagger is also a diagonal matrix so now utilizing these results i can write a dagger a is equal to v uh, sigma square v dagger okay this is an important relation i have obtained and we are going to exploit it but before that uh, one important uh, a point to note here that this matrix a dagger a is a square matrix now it's a n by n matrix and it's a symmetric matrix it is a n by n symmetric matrix symmetric matrix that n. a symmetric mat matrix has exactly n eigen values it has it has n eigen values and it has n mutually and mutually orthogonal eigenvectors orthogonal eigenvectors these are two important properties of a symmetric uh, matrix and again this guy sigma square it is all a diagonal matrix it's a n by n diagonal it's again a square matrix now 
it has a and its diagonal elements are now lambda 1 square in the main diagonal the elements would be lambda 1 square lambda 2 square up to lambda n square and the rest of the elements are going to be zero okay rest of the elements are going to be zero here and therefore i can write finally a dagger a is equal to v capital sigma square v dagger now a dagger a is a n by n square matrix sigma square uh, sigma square is a capital sigma square is also a square matrix uh, now it this expression should remind you about another expression which we have discussed in the context of eigen decomposition method where a was a in eigen decomposition method we got this expression if you remember we got v capital lambda capital v dagger right and here a is a square matrix capital lambda is a diagonal matrix all right and this we actually got from eigen decomposition method we got this from decomposition method now certainly we can have a one-to-one -one correspondence between these two expressions and if we do the one-to-one -one correspondence then you will see from here that this capital v is the is a is a matrix it's a matrix of eigenvectors eigenvectors matrix of eigenvectors of a dagger a you got the idea just like here if you recall this capital v uh, it consists of vectors it, it was basically con how it was constructed if you recall uh, it was constructed by the eigenvectors of the matrix a so in the similar way, uh, way this matrix capital v it is built up from the eigenvectors of this matrix a dagger a overall this capital sigma is the diagonal matrix of the square root of the square root of the eigenvalues of the eigenvalues of a dagger a i hope you get the idea because again using the same correspondence here you see this capital lambda uh, its diagonal elements are the eigenvalues of this matrix a similarly here capital sigma square its diagonal elements are the eigen uh, values of this matrix a dagger a so capital sigma is going to have the elements which are the square root of the eigen values of the matrix a dagger a so that means what we are going to have how we can find v and uh, capital sigma v is going to be from the eigenvectors of the matrix a dagger a so you will have say its vectors would be orthonormal vectors would be say v1 v2 up to vn and uh, this capital sigma is going to have the elements say square root of lambda 1 square root of lambda 2 up to square root of lambda n in the uh, main diagonal so we'll do some example also to understand the whole uh, thing later on so this is what you are going to get now how to obtain capital u it can also be obtained in the similar way only with a slight difference let me explain that we'll start again with this uh, expression capital a is equal to capital u capital sigma capital v dagger now multiply both sides of this equation by a dagger from right so i have a dagger on the right if i multiply so i will have u capital sigma 
V dagger, A dagger. Now let me simplify this capital U capital sigma V dagger A. I am going to put capital U capital sigma V dagger then dagger. From here you can uh, show it very easily that you are going to get this final expression capital U capital sigma square capital U dagger. So this is what you are going to get now there is a difference in the sense that this matrix is again a square matrix but this time it has a dimension of m by m unlike the one that we had discussed earlier for the other case here this one you see it has the dimension of uh, n by n and original matrix a has the dimension of m by n because that was a non-square matrix that was a rectangular matrix what we are now getting because of this matrix operation we are getting a square matrix a a dagger is a square matrix and a dagger a is also square matrix but having different dimensions now if you do the same kind of analysis for this one also you will find that this capital u is going to be a matrix consisting of the eigen uh, eigenvectors of the matrix a a dagger with the elements eigenvectors would be u1 u2 up to um these are the eigenvectors of the matrix a a dagger and capital sigma square it is also going to have the same non-zero eigenvalues as that of a dagger a but so to conclude the SVD method we can express a non-square matrix A in the form capital U capital Sigma V dagger where this capital U has elements it consists of the eigenvectors U1 U2 up to um which is a m by m square matrix it's a m by m square matrix and these are the eigenvectors of the matrix a a dagger and capital sigma capital sigma has the diagonal elements square root of lambda 1 square root of lambda 2 and up to square root of lambda n and rest of the elements are zero all the elements are zero of diagonal elements and this is going to be m by n matrix and these are uh, eigenvalues of the matrix a dagger a or a a dagger and v v is going to be a matrix formed by the eigenvectors v1 v2 up to vn this is a n by n square matrix and these are the eigenvectors these are the eigenvectors of a a a dagger a right so now we'll do some example in the next lecture to understand this sbd method little bit more clearly let me stop for now we'll continue our discussion in the next lecture thank you so much